They were keen to buy eight from us. They were familiar with this type of loco, having already had one in Cameroon for the last, I guess, eight years. Towards the end of last year, we started negotiating with AGL. They have two subsidiaries in West Africa, concessions, uh, CETA Rail and Camrail. They were looking for eight locomotives. We were in the market for potentially selling. We came to terms. Essentially, we would provide eight locomotives. They would then be serviced. Certain components would be changed. Once that was done and they met then the tests that were required post that servicing, we then uh, modified the locomotives. Obviously West Africa, those two concessions are meter gauge. These locos were on Cape gauge. And then we changed the coupling systems as well. Both Camrail and Cita Rail have their own unique coupling systems, or unique from our perspective, I think common in, in France perhaps, but uh, different to the E-type couplers that we use in, in Southern Africa. So on that note, Andrew's going to take me through and we're going to have a look at some of the changes and adaptions and upgrades that have taken place. So this is the coupling system that they use in CETA rail. I understand it's a French system. We have an E-type coupler that will come out here and the coupling will go like that. It's a kinetic coupling system, i.e. you bang it together to make it lock. This is a non-kinetic system, despite these great big buffers. Um, essentially the two, either wagon or another locomotive, would come together two hooks like this, a turnbuckle would go over the top, they tighten it up, obviously then make the connections either vacuum pipes or air pipes. Um, so quite a different system. Um, obviously with the E-type coupler, all of our strength is in the gear case behind here. Now by putting these on we've had to significantly strengthen behind the, uh, the pilot here. Um, so there's been quite a lot of engineering work that's gone on there. We've had to very carefully look at the length of air hoses, etc., to make sure that when they do couple, it's going to work. The multi-unit cable that comes from here, putting two locos together so they talk to each other, we've had to buy extra long ones because these buffers obviously come out significantly. So we've actually had to replace the MU cables we had on the locos to get a longer one. So they can obviously put two locos together, single driver operation. So the reinforcing that you've had to do on the other side, it's obviously because there's quite a lot of energy that would then yeah. come together here. Yeah, so obviously we work very closely with the team from Cita Rail, extremely experienced uh, operators. They came in here and we worked together on how to do this properly. Um, so they, they wanted quite significant stiffening behind here. Uh, whilst this is a non-kinetic uh, coupling system, Inevitably, in day-to-day -day operations, we expect there to be some contact. So obviously the major, major change was to the gauge. Uh, essentially, once the uh, initial engineering work was done, these locomotives were put onto pedestals, the bogies were taken off, wheel sets were sent to the Surtees engineering business. Um, they then pressed off the existing wheels. We bought new wheels, pressed them on, but to meter gauge rather than a cape gauge. And then the wheels were profiled to the specific profile used in Camrail and Cita Rail. So it's a slightly different wheel profile from what we're familiar with here in South Africa. Okay. Um, then obviously traction motors completely serviced. Um, we had to move some of the brake uh, gear so that it lined up perfectly with the wheels because of the different profile, because of the different gauge. General servicing, obviously wear plates, that sort of thing. Those were the major engineering works that were done in addition to the sort of servicing of the loco and the changing of certain components. Engine, still an EMD. EMD 645 16 cylinder engine, AR10 alternator, uh, Enforce control system from NRE in the United States. Okay. Um, then they are coupled to GE 761 traction motors. So overall, this is a 3000 horsepower locomotive um, with uh, 380 kilonewtons of, of tractive effort at startup and 300 kilonewtons continuous. These locos can also be multi-united. We've run up to five locos together actually in other operations. Um, so single driver, single train assistant, controlling all five locos from the one cab. Is that like on a radio distribution? No, there's cables that run between the locomotives. We call them MU cables. So, we, so that basically then allows in the settings on the, on the control system, the lead loco would be lead, and the following locos would be set for trail, 
So they're basically slaving to the, the control system in the lead loco. Okay. So Andrew, these ones are going to such a rail, there's four of them. Yeah. And then the four for Camrail, they're currently in engineering. They are having the conversion works done. So from a, uh, from a performance perspective, they've passed those tests. Yeah. Uh, we're now going into the conversion phase. So uh, there, because in Camrail, for example, they don't use vacuum. So we're changing the compressor system here. These locos are fitted with uh, compressor exhausters so they can create both air pressure and vacuum. In Cameroon, they only use air, so we're pulling the compressor exhausters off, taking out all the vacuum piping, and just putting in a dedicated air compressor. Traditionally, the GL30s, when they were built, they were built with the sandboxes on the bogies. Over time, we've learned that uh, that makes them slightly vulnerable to vibration and to impacts, particularly where rail conditions are not great. So one of the mods we've done on the fleet over the years is to move the sandboxes up from the bogey onto the underframe just gives them a little bit less impact from, from poor quality rail. So that's one of the changes we've made. We've learned a lot from our client, I'll be honest with you. They've come here and they've taught us a few things as well. So it's been a very interesting process. It's a change. No, no, no. I think we're always, every day's a school day. Um, but yeah, we've learned a lot from them. They've, they've brought a lot of their experience from operating in West Africa. Um, many, many decades of experience in that organization. Um, and we've learned from them. Uh, some of the tests we were doing during the engineering phase were not things that we regularly do. Um, so we, we looked at that together. We tried to understand what we were trying to achieve with those tests. And we actually then developed their tests to be slightly different. And we all agreed that was a better version. So it's been a real uh, collaborative process. And there's been, a, if I understand, there's been a number of, of um, kind of, should we call them factory acceptance or a number of stages? Yeah, stages. Initial inspection from that, we developed the criteria they had for uh, servicing and certain component changes. They were very keen to have common componentry throughout the fleet, which of course makes sense. Um, so we've made a few changes to certain things to create that commonality. Um, from there, we did the servicing. That then led to the engineering tests and the dynamic testing of the locomotives to ensure they performed. Brake tests, load box tests, um, various sort of uh, post-servicing tests were done to make sure the locos were achieving the outputs that we promised they would. Um, once that was then done, we moved to the modification phase. That was done now and completed on these locos whilst there's a little bit of painting work still going on here. We had a little bit of time from completion of factory acceptance to shipping. So we're just putting some chevrons on the pilot uh, as just a little added thing that makes sense. It's a good safety measure. And as we've got the time to do it, then we're doing it. So then factory acceptance test number two. Once that's signed off, we effectively sell these locos to the client and they will now ship them to the destination in Ivory Coast. Is there any like kind of maintenance agreement? A mixture of ourselves and African Rail and Traction Services have been contracted to provide certain things. We're assisting with the procurement of certain critical spares, certain consumables for three years worth of servicing. Um, the arts team will actually go and do the commissioning in West Africa. Okay. Um, we're obviously going to be involved there as well, but arts have been contracted directly by the client to do that. We've had numerous teams from both Cameroon and Ivory Coast here having training on the locomotives from both a maintenance point of view, but also an operations point of view. Uh, there will be driver training conducted, etc., uh, particularly in the Ivory Coast where they're not familiar with the technology. In Cameroon, they've been operating, as I say, with one of these for about eight years. So they're obviously familiar with the use of these locos. When are you going to ship? Waiting for the client to confirm. Obviously, AGL's a significant logistics business. They didn't need my help with logistics. So <laughs> they're making their own arrangements. I believe they're chartering a ship. Um, obviously, these will move down to the port by road because they're on meter gauge, they can't go on transnet rail. Um, so we'll bring in a big gantry crane here, they'll lift the locos in the air, uh, the trucks will be fitted with meter gauge rail for the loco to stand on, um, and then they'll be trucked down to, to Durban uh, and loaded on a ship there. So it's quite fortuitous because this facility has this track for yes. you to use. Yes. Yeah, no, that was an earlier project, uh, a different iteration, uh, we're building meter gauge uh, locomotives for a client and uh, installed this meter gauge track. So 
obviously we were aware of it, the guys at Arts were aware of it, so we approached the landlord here and agreed that we would use this facility for this project. Some of the re additional reinforcements we made here, I mean, you can't see all of it, obviously there's layers of it behind here, but certainly these triangles were installed and welded into place. It's creating obviously a lot more uh, strength. Um, obviously that goes up to the underframe, which is the strongest part of the, the locomotive. There is actually additional um, supports behind that as well. So yeah, it's pretty solid, uh, pretty solid. So even if they have what we call a hard shunt or a hard coupling, those buffer at the front are well supported. So on this one here, we don't have the the buffers are there, so obviously when the client shipped one set of buffers to us, they're quite heavy um, and we didn't want to go to the expense of shipping, you know, enough for eight basically is what we'd need here. So we've used the one set to then model the changes we needed to make. These spacer blocks came in, we've extended the air pipes so that they can couple around the, the buffer that you saw at the other end. As you see, these vacuum pipes have also been extended. We've gone too far with these deliberately. We will cut them back when we install the actual vacuum pipes on that side. But if you, you can always cut, it's harder to put back. So we went long. The klaxon or the horn there actually moved from the top of the loco down to the bottom. So that we're just being extra careful on the air draft that CTRL requires. They've got some sort of sealed off bridges. So we need to make sure that we're within their air draft. So we moved the highest point of the loco down, which was the horns. Um, it's a minor thing, but uh, attention to detail. And that's what this project's been all about. So there's two ways that the brake system on the locomotives and the train works, yeah. either through air or through vacuum. Yeah. The modern, more modern system, of course, is air brake, but an a older system, which is still commonly used all over the continent, is the vacuum system. Yeah. Vacuum trains normally limited to 40 wagons. Air brake trains obviously can go much, much longer. All right, any updates in the cab itself? We did change some of the driver screens. Uh, one of the things we're working with with the software provider is to have French installed on the software. There was some refurbishment done. When changing things like air pipes, it impacts the brake system. So we've done a lot of brake testing and that was part of the factory acceptance tests. The Knorr Bremser CCB2 brake system, Enforce control system. Uh, standard controls inside the cab that you'd expect to see. Start on the Camrail locomotives when? They've started already. Okay. So they're at the Arts Main Workshop, African Rail and Traction Services. First thing is take out that compressor exhauster, replace it with a standard compressor, take out the vacuum piping. The bogies have already been pulled out from under the locos, the wheel sets have been sent off for new wheels, reprofiling and yep, squeezing together for the, the meter gauge. Yeah. Then the mods on the bogies in terms of where the brake shoes are sitting, etc. that's all being done. Um, and then eventually those locomotives will come here and then they'll be assembled onto their meter gauge, taking advantage of this meter gauge rail. Yeah. Would it be fair to say that in hindsight these have turned out to be pretty good locomotives? Yeah, I think they have. I mean, I've been working with these locos now since 2012 um, and uh, any of the issues that may have existed at the time of assembly, and I, I use assembly rather than manufacture because obviously a lot of this came as kits from the US, um, those things have been worked through now. Um, there's a fleet of I think 85 in total of these running around the region at the moment um, and they're working incredibly well. I mean we've worked with them uh, all over Africa in Sierra Leone. We were running 112 wagon iron ore trains um, We've got locos currently deployed in the Northern Cape. They're pulling 125 wagon uh, manganese trains. We've had them deployed in Zimbabwe, Zambia, Tanzania, uh, Mozambique, Namibia. So pretty much all over the region. They've obviously been in Cameroon before, now going back. These are really good locos. The technology is known. The workshops can handle them. The tooling is common in terms of the EMD or Progress Rail now. Um, Every, every locomotive workshop in Africa is familiar with GE and EMD technology. Um, so it makes them very friendly to, to operate in the region. Um, yeah, they perform, they perform well. We ran, in Sierra Leone, we were running at 99% availability. Uh, at, I think in the Northern Cape, the five that are there are running at 99% availability. Um, as long as you, I mean, locomotives are all about skills, skills, people, uh, facilities, 
the facility to properly maintain locos, spare parts, and then the way in which they're operated. And if they're operated within the safe working parameters, then they'll be reliable. Um, often the problems come with these locomotives is when they are used in a manner that they're not meant to be used, trading loads are too long, etc. So, yeah, exactly. Um, and then if infrastructure is in very poor condition, obviously you get a lot of shocks on the motors and whatever. So, but other than that, if they're operated correctly and they're maintained correctly, these are brilliant locomotives. I mean, they are 12, 13 years old. So in terms of a locomotive, they're still young. Um, they've all been well serviced, well maintained over their life. Um, these have got 20 years in them at least, maybe more. What's next? What's next for Railco? After we sell these, we've still got 10 more of these which are with customers. We've got a fleet of uh, wagons. We've got about 150 wagons that are in various different contracts. So yeah, business is ongoing. We will see what the future holds. Lots of changes in the industry in South Africa, as you know, Philippa. Um, we, as a team, are, I'd like to say, pretty experienced. And we know how to procure. We know how to maintain. We know how to operate, and I think those are the skills that are going to be required as this market opens up to the private sector. So we'll no doubt be in the mix.